All right, today we're going to take a look at factoring trinomials. And our essential question is, what makes a trinomial harder to factor? Remember, a trinomial has three terms. And when we have something that's harder to factor, you'll often see this with the directions, factor completely. No E. Okay, so when you see the directions, factor completely. Um, there's a good clue with that that you have a GCF. So if we have a quadratic, that's x to the second power, and it's in standard form, so we see ax squared plus bx plus c, um, there's probably a GCF that you can divide out. And GCF stands for greatest common factor. And when you have a greatest common factor, then you're, what you're going to get is you're going to pull out your GCF on the outside, and you're still going to be left with a quadratic in standard form. Okay. okay. And this is important to see this form because step number zero is always factor out a leading negative and or GCF. So a leading negative is really a multiple of negative one. So we're always going to do that. So let's let's jump right into our first problem and just look for a GCF since that's been kind of tricky to start out with. So if we look at 4x squared minus 14x plus 6, we want to ask ourselves, is there anything that we can divide out evenly um, in every single term? And there's three terms. I see there's only an x in two of the terms, but they're all even, so I can divide out a 2. My GCF then goes to the outside, and my what is um, when I'm divided, it goes on the inside. So 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. The x squared is still there. Negative 14 divided by 2 gives me negative 7. The x is still there. And uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that's step number 0. So you always want to look for that. Okay. Step number one is multiply the coefficients, that's the number in front of the letter, in the upper left and the lower right box. Okay, let's take a deep, deeper look at that. So what we're going to do is we are going to put our first term in the upper left box. So our first term is 2x squared. We're going to put our third term, which is 3, in the lower right box. So part of this is just setting it up. But the directions say to multiply the coefficients in the upper left and lower right. So that is the a and the c. If we look at our standard form, we have our a and our c. So we're going to take a times c, and that gives me 2 times 3. It gives me 6. And with this product, we're going to do what we've been doing in College Readiness and Avid, and we are going to factor out the number 6 into factor pair. So 1 times 6 gives me 6, and 2 times 3 gives me 6. So here's the good news, is what we're about to do next we only have two choices because we've set this up nicely. Okay, now step number two, what are the factors that create the middle? So what's going on here is when we multiply two binomials, we have like terms on the diagonals. You guys really like to see that pattern of like terms on the diagonals because then you didn't always have to rewrite it. But now that we're factoring, and factoring is undoing distribution, now we have to undo combining like terms. And this is different. 
like, uh-oh. But we've got a, a process for you. So we need to take the one term, the b in the middle, negative 7x, and we need to figure out what are the factors of negative 7x so that we can put them in two boxes. So we have one term that needs to go in two boxes. So we're going to look at our two choices over here, and we're going to ask ourselves, which of these factor pairs adds to negative 7x? And 1 plus 6 are both positive. But remember, we got 1 and 6 by saying 1 times 6 equals 6. But if we look at the negatives, if we made it a negative 1 and a negative 6, a negative times a negative is a positive. And then we get negative 7. And we can just tack on an x at the end. Negative 2 plus negative 3 gives me negative 5, so it can't be it can't be the second factor pair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a negative 1 and a negative 6 in the two boxes, and it doesn't matter which one you put in which box because of the commutative property. Um, but what we need to do, and why I put the negative 7x in what we're adding to, is that reminds me to put an x in the boxes as well. So this one's really important. So 2 and 3 kind of go together. Okay, great. Now we're going to do um, the same process of factoring with our box that we did for the GCF. We're going to factor out greatest common factor for every row and for every column. It doesn't matter where you start. You just have to do it four times. Um, so if I look at the first column, I have a 2 and a 6, so the GCF would be 2. I have an x squared and an x, so there's an x in common. If, oh, here's a really cool pattern. See this negative here? When you have a negative touching your factors on the outside of the box, you're always going to have a negative. They're, your signs are going to match up, so it's going to be positive, positive, negative, and down here is going to be negative 2. Um, so the only thing that negative 1x and 3 have in common is, is 1, and I'm just giving you a heads up that it's going to be negative. We can check it at the end just to make sure. Okay, the top row, I see there's 2 and a 1, so just a 1 is in common, and we do have an x in common. And down below, we've got a 3 and a negative. So the pattern of the negatives is cool, but let's double check. We should always check our work. So 2x times x is 2x squared. x times negative 1, negative 1x. Negative 3 times 2x, negative 6x. And negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. So that checks. All right. So the cool part is now we are going to, so this, one, this step makes me really happy because once I do this, I've got my two binomial factors of 2x minus 1 and x minus 3. So if I go back to what I've already factored out with a GCF and I bring my GCF down, I'm not going to have one big parenthesis anymore. I'm going to have my final answer should have two sets of parentheses for my two binomials, 2x minus 1 and x minus 3. Again, it doesn't matter which binomial you put first because of the commutative property of multiplication. And we have now factored completely my original problem of 4x squared minus 14x plus 6. The final answer is 2 times the quantity 2x minus 1 times the quantity x minus 3. All right, let's do that again. Okay, you might get colors right. So always, always, always want to pull out a GCF and a leading negative. So now that we've done one, we've got our new problem is 2x squared minus 11x plus 15. Let's check for any GCFs. 2, negative 11, 15. Well, 2 doesn't go into either one of those, and 15 doesn't have an x, so there's actually no GCF. That makes me happy. That's less work. All right, step number two, I'm going to then label my A, my B, my C. 
My first term goes in the upper left box, 2x squared. My third term goes in my lower right box. Notice that just a is it's just 2, and b is negative 11, and c is 15. So the a, b, and c are just the coefficients, or just the numbers, not the full term. Just something to be careful of for later. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take 2 times 15. So my a times my c, 2 times 15 gives me 30. And I want to factor 30. So 1 times 30, 30 is even, so it's divisible by 2. Um, 2 and 15, 3 would be the next number, and yep, divisible by 3, 3 and 10. Is 30 divisible by 4? Nope, but 5 and 6 works. And although this is a little bit of work, the good news is we only have 1, 2, 3, 4 choices to pick from in what we're about to do next. And what we're about to do next is find the factors that create the middle. So our middle term is negative 11x, but we have to put it in two boxes. We have to put it in two boxes. So we're gonna, we've got four choices, and so we're going to ask ourselves, well, which one of these pairs adds to negative 11? Negative 11x, so I don't forget to add an x at the end. And we see we've got signs um, to think about. And so we've got a positive 30 factor, um, but two positives multiply to be a positive, but also two negatives multiply to be a positive. So when I look at now when they add, that would be negative 31, negative 17, negative 13, and here we have negative 11. So I'm going to use negative 5 and negative 6 in my two boxes, and I'm not going to forget an x, so I write it over here. And we are so close to being done. We need to then factor out our GCFs in every row and every column. Remember the trick that um, along the edge, our sign should match. So um, we should have a negative, a positive, a positive, and a negative. And we can always check it. You should always check your work. So if I look in the first row, I see a 2 and a 6, so a 2, and x squared and ox, we have an x in common. My second column, I see a 5 and a 15, so they both have a 5, but only one has an x. My first row, a 2 and a 5, they're both primed, so I don't have any numbers in common, but I do have an x in common. Negative 6 and 15, I do have a negative, a 3. 3 is in common. Let's check. Always check at this step before you go on. Um, 2x times x gives me 2x squared. Negative 5 times x, negative 5x. Negative 3 times 2, times negative 6, bring the x down. Negative 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. So we did, we did good work. We're taking these two binomial factors, and we're going to rewrite it for our final answer. So 2x squared minus 11x plus 15 can be factored into 2x, oops, 2x minus 5 and x minus 3. All right, let's do another one. I always want to look for a GCF. I don't see a GCF, but I have a leading coefficient that's negative, so we always want our A to be positive. So we're, I'm going to divide out a negative 1. So that gives me x squared plus 7x plus 10. I'm just going to change all the signs. Great. Now I'm going to find my A is 1, my B is 7, my C is 10. I'm going to take my first term and put it in the upper left box. The third term, put it in the lower right. I need to figure out what to put, um, how to divide 7x up into the two remaining boxes. So I'm going to take a times c. So 1 times 10 gives me 10. 
And if I quickly factor that, I see I only have two choices, which I like. Now I want to figure which of these two choices adds to 7x. And I'm just kind of imagining that there's an x there for now. I'll put an x in later. 1 plus 10 gives me 11, and 2 plus 5 gives me 7. So I'm going to choose 2 and 5. So 2 and 5, don't forget that it has to add up to x. 7x's. Okay, great. Let's now factor out. Maybe, maybe we start by factoring out some rows first. Um, so if I got x squared and 2x, they both have an x in common. 5 and 10 both have a 5 in common. The first row, what's in common? An x and a 2. Remember that these are signed numbers. So when we have our, when we make our factor, that's x plus 2 and x plus 5. So this is now factored. We've got a negative out front, but instead of one big factor, we now have two binomial factors of x plus 2 and x plus 5. Great job. All right, one more example on the front. Okay, so let's see if there's anything we can divide out for our GCF. See, I've got a negative out front, so I'm going to have to have a negative GCF. 12, 5, well, 5 is prime and 3 is prime, prime, so I don't have any numerical GCFs, but I do have a W in common. All right, so my GCF is negative W. And if I cancel those out, I've got negative 12w squared plus 5w. Oops, it's not plus because I've got a negative. So plus negative 5w and minus 3. Let's just double check that. Negative 12. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sorry, positive 12. Good thing I checked. So negative times a positive is a negative. And w times w squared is w cubed. And negative times positive is, ah, there's my negative. I'm going to put that in a different color so I see it. A negative times a negative is a positive. w times w is w squared. Negative times a negative is a positive. w times 3 is 3w. Okay, great. Now I'm going to find my... I'm going to take my first term of 12w squared and my third term of negative 3, put it in my box. I'm going to take a times c, so 12 times negative 3 gives me negative 36. I'm going to worry about the negatives and signs later. I'm just going to figure out my factor pairs. 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9. Okay, and before I think about my negatives, I'm going to see that I need it to add up to negative 5w. So I want to think which of these four choices, if I factored correctly, which of these four choices add up to negative 5w? Now here's the really cool part. If it needs, if my sum is negative, because I've structured my factor pairs this way, the larger factor has to be negative for my sum to be negative. So if I look at my choices, I'd be negative 35, negative 16, um, negative 9, but here we go, negative 5. So I'm going to choose 4 and negative 9 and add a W at the end. And it doesn't matter which one I put in which box. Alright, now let's pull out our GCFs, 12 and 4, have a GCF of 4. They both have a W. Now I've got a negative, so my factor is going to be negative. 9 and 3 both have a factor of 3. And, okay, if I look at my first column, 12 and 9 has a factor of 3, and they both have a W. And 4 and 3. Here's another thing. When you notice that 4W, your column, 
matches the factor column, you're going to have a 1. Negative, negative, positive, positive, positives, positives. All right, let's check. 3 times 4 is 12. W times W is W squared. 4 times 1 is 4, bringing over the W. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, bringing down the W. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. So that checks. So we have our factors. Boom, boom. Remember that everything is a signed number. So if there's no sign there, it's positive. Let's keep going with our final answer. So we have a negative WGCF, but now we have two binomials. So I've got 4W minus 3 and 3W plus 1. There we have it. So this is the front side. I'll have another video for the back side.